Welcome to Nerd Train with Grit and Grace. Hi, I'm Deb Kelsey Davis, and I'm an affiliate of Maze Lake Ministries in Downers Grove, Illinois. I'm a caregiver. I'm going to start out with that because it's probably one of the most important things I've ever done in my life. And I would have to say that it's filled with tremendous joy and privilege, and I hope that you feel that too. I also honestly will say that it's probably one of the most emotionally, physically, and spiritually draining experiences I've ever faced. And I don't think I'm alone in that. And I, if you're like me, you're not alone either. So today we're going to talk about the spirituality of asking for and receiving help. When I think about that topic alone, um, the one that probably brought me to my knees most often. Um, it's only through my faith that I was able to survive and work through that, but really it was my ability to be able to thrive. My faith was what carried me through. So I invite you today to join me as we navigate this journey together. All right, so I'm going to start with a question as we talk about that spiritual component of asking for and receiving help. Is it the hardest thing to do for you? Is it easy for you to do? How does that experience of someone offering you help affect you? Does it drag up any kind of an emotion inside of you? What about just thinking about asking someone else to help you? You know, there's a tremendous amount of guilt and fear and shame that many of us caregivers say we feel when we even just anticipate asking someone to help us. And that is a perfectly natural response because many of us are raised throughout our lives. When you think about yourself as a child, you know, part of the rearing and growing up is learning how to be independent, right? So there's that sense of, I have to do it myself. I mean, a question I often ask myself when I find that I'm not accepting help is, who asked me to be superhuman? And I don't think God asked me to be superhuman. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Um, that's the spiritual component of asking for and receiving help. And I did not see that at first when I started in my caregiving role. I actually thought that I was supposed to be the one doing everything. After all, that's what the second half of the word caregiver means, right? You're giving, giving of yourself. However, I was reminded and it hit me one day as I was sitting in church and I was listening to the sermon that spoke about how we put our trust in God. And so I started to think about that. All those times that I never accepted help, was I in many ways also distancing myself from God? Because it can be a lonely journey if we don't accept that help or look to lean on, first and foremost, God right? And that's about being in relationship. And the same thing happens with people. If we are refusing to ask for help when we really need it, then we're also refusing someone else the ability to help us. So in many ways, we're not only denying ourselves, but we are denying other people who want to be involved, who want to be in relationship with us. And that is the beauty of the spiritual component of asking for and receiving help. Let me also put this on you. Have you been in a situation where you're praying, please God, help me? You know, oftentimes we think about all the prayers that we send and we wonder, does God hear us? I assure you, He does. God hears us. And in fact, we are invited. We, scripture tells us that we are invited to call upon the name of the Lord knock and the door shall be opened. And it's that practice of thinking through when you're in that situation where you need help to realize that by asking, by acknowledging that you can't do it all, you're actually building a relationship with God and with others. So I also want to talk about the thing that we probably don't often talk about, which is the burden of caregiving. And there is a lot of burden involved, depending on where you are in your situation, right? Some of us have more help than others. Well, think about it this way. You are not a burden when you're asking someone else to help you. Rather, you have a burden 
and you need someone to help you with that heavy load. And when we ask for help, the first time you do it, the second time you do it, I want you to think for a minute, how might that feel to you? We spoke a little bit earlier that when we think about asking for help, it, it kind of brings up inside of us all those fears or feelings of guilt or shame. But once we ask for help and we receive it, how do we feel? How do you feel? I can share with you that my first emotion is relief and gratitude. And I then sometimes have to ask myself, why didn't I ask for help sooner? Because honestly, that moment of relief and, and just the feelings of happiness to know that I have someone to give me some help is, is just, it's heartfelt, it's joyful. Now, I will also want to bring up here, because you might be thinking of this yourself, what if I'm not comfortable asking for help? Well, I would suggest that you start small. So many of us, when we think about asking for help, Think about this huge, huge favor that we've got to ask someone that they couldn't possibly have enough time to help us with. Well, I like to think about it as a process of breaking it down into very small little pieces. And think about how you can take anything and break it into smaller pieces. For example, um, my father, who's 91 years old, he needs help with transportation to seeing all of the doctors that he has to see. I just came back from a stint of three doctor visits in less than 24 hours. And honestly, he has several more and I just, I can't do them all. I can't. I know that about myself, but I can ask others to help. So the way I look at this is I look for the opportunities for those in community, those that he shares rides with to other events, to look at maybe dividing it up amongst several people and asking for help rather than thinking I have to ask one person to do it all, all right? And you can do that with anything. So think about breaking what you need into smaller tasks and then asking people, gee, you know, I've got several things that I could use help with and let them choose. Then it's not assigning, it's actually letting them decide what they can do for you. So think about it that way. You know, again, I wanna just circle back to when you're asking for help and you're receiving it, you're receiving the goodness in others, which is also the goodness that God has for us in our life. And if you think about this, truly, we are engaging as a community and we're engaging with Jesus in the midst of all of us through this. So what I'd like to do is I would like to invite you to close with me with a prayer. And I am going to open my journal and I'm gonna ask you, if you're so inclined, to close your eyes and just take a moment, a deep breath, and I'd like to read to you a prayer. Lord, I bring to you my burdens. You know my situation, you know my heart, and you know that I can't make it without you. <laughs> Comfort my heart and give me the strength and the courage to turn to you and to those you've placed in my life to daily ask for and receive help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me today, and please, please ask for and receive help.